Give us a hand. We're going to do something really unique um, because I'm going to, there's been a lot of confusion between knowledge and understanding, right? And most of us don't think that all we got to do is just know something and that's good enough. So I want you to imagine if someone says to you, can I borrow your car? And your question, your first question is, for what? If I want to drive it across the state. Next question. What's the next question? How about, do you have a license? Would that be a good idea to ask? All right. Do you have a license? And he goes, I know how to drive a car. Now what would you say? What would you say? They know how, they say, I know how to drive a car. So do you ask them, do you have a license? I know how to drive a car. Now are you more confident in giving them your car? So the next question you might want to ask is, how long have you been driving? And they say, they never have. But they've read all the books about it. And your answer will be? <laughs> Why not? Isn't, it, isn't knowing the same thing as doing? I have a person, people walk up to me and say, well, Frank, I want to invest. Okay? Now, I've been an investor since 1975. I've been trained by two schools of, of investment, two college universities courses. So I understood how to invest, and I have almost 30 years of investment practice, so I don't make mistakes. And they want me to just tell them where to invest. It's like, OK, let's, you drive my car. And I'll talk to you by the phone and tell you when to put on the brake, when to accelerate, when to shift gears. Is that going to work? No. You've got to know how it works. You've got to understand why you press the brake, how hard you press the brake. You've got to know how to drive, how to change lanes. There's a lot. Driving is a lot more complicated than just answers to questions or someone in the back seat telling you, okay, now step on the brake now, step on the accelerator, turn the wheel. It would just be an accident, yes or no. All right. Now, when it comes to somehow people think that walking with God is just tell me what I got to do. It doesn't work like that. That's not how it works. It is, it takes 10,000 hours of practice just to begin. Now, the reason I have a little advantage because I've been doing it since 1972 when I was a complete idiot, thinking I, I'm going to, you know, whatever, I don't know what I thought. But um, when you do it, it takes practice and practice. How long does it take to be a great uh, guitarist? Not a great guitar, a guitarist. Guitarist. Huh? Seven years. Seven years. Approximately 10,000 hours of practice. So that could be anywhere between six and 10 years, depending on how much effort you put into it. So to be good at anything, you've got to be able to put forth the what? The effort. God, God says many are called, but few are what? Chosen. Chosen means qualified. Everybody's called, but few are what? Chosen. They're just not qualified. They can't meet the basics. Is that making sense? There's nothing wrong with wanting to. There's nothing wrong to, with desiring to. There's nothing wrong with having the goal of it. But put forth no effort, you get no what? No results. Does that make sense? So what I want to do is explain something. How many drove here? How many took every single exit off the freeway? Didn't you see the signs? Then you see the billboards, next exit, whatever, right? But you saw those and you didn't what? You didn't take them. You, you stayed on focus and you did not get off of them. Now, this is what we're dealing with here. If you're going to be something, if you're going to be a, a, a world's champion violinist, okay? Okay. How many hours are you going to put in each day? You, in order to be excellent, you've got to put in how many hours? 10,000. So if you put in 30 minutes every week, 
where would you be after seven years? Not enough. I have a guitar in there, one of the finest guitars made. It's mine. I've had it for 32 years. I haven't, I can't play a single song on it. What's wrong? I have this goal to play guitar. So I can play one song on it, and that's it. Now, is that stupid or what? It was a very expensive guitar. I, wanted, I had this dream of being able to play guitar. All right, so there it is. And I, I have the music, but I can't play the what? Guitar. I have not put forth the effort or what? Time into it. Does that make sense? All right, so in our minds, how many of you have had desires to be someone, to accomplish something, to do something, but never did it? What caused it? What stopped you? What detoured you? Now, that's what this is about. This is going to show you a way to accomplish it, just like Joseph, just like Dan Daniel, so you understand what it takes to excel and how to get out of this. What do you call that? That little thing where the hamster goes in and goes, and then he's totally exhausted and he's gone absolutely nowhere. What's that called? A hamster wheel, yeah. It's a little wheel that they run and run and run and run and run and he goes like a bat out of hell. And then he comes up, he's, he hasn't gone anywhere, right? And that's exactly what we're doing every day. We, we get angry, we get upset, we spin our wheels, and we go absolutely what? Nowhere. Does anyone like to stay where you're at? All right, so let's begin a journey of accomplishment rather than just thinking and dreaming. Father, thank you for the greatness of your word, and thank you for the guide it gives us. Thank you for this session, for helping me to truly bless those present who you called out to truly excel and to help me be my best for them, to teach, to admonish, to structure, to guide, and to build the greatness of your truth within all of us that we may truly glorify you and walk in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead, our risen and returned Lord Jesus, your anointed. Okay, so let's begin. Now, I'm going to teach you a little bit of history, just a little bit, right? And you're going to, I think you'll find this quite interesting. All right, the true way of life. Here we go. Now, I'm going to start off with what the Word of God says we're supposed to do. And it says, flat out, we're supposed to be imitators of who? So that means tomorrow we, we created a heavens and the earth. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're not supposed to create a frog. Or, I mean, you can, maybe. No, I doubt it. But um, science is trying to imitate God, and they're not doing so good. All right, so what are we talking about when the Word talks about imitating God? All right, so what is it? Now, now are we impressed? Okay, can someone please read this up here? Read this. That's not demonic. That's real, you know, hieroglyphics. Can you read them for me? Could someone please read them for me? Can, you can't read those? That's okay. No one else could. The problem was is that we didn't even know what these things meant, except they were just pretty pictures. We couldn't even read it until Napoleon went down and conquered Egypt and discovered the Rosetta Stone. It wasn't until the 18th century, 18, was it 1830 or something like that, that they finally were able to decipher it with the Rosetta Stone. And then that opened up understanding what this was all about. What was this saying? Because this... This imagery is all over Egypt. And the subject matter is Ramses. That's supposed to be Ramses, by the way. And, and he's huge, right? Remember I told you about big pictures? Right? He's huge, and everybody else is itsy-bitsy. Right? So therefore, he is extraordinary. Right? He is the great Ramses. And all his statues are like immense, but he himself is not. You know, he's just a normal guy. So that's Ramses II. So what is this all about? Well, Let's go back back to the word again, and it says in Ephesians 5, 1, Be ye, therefore, followers of God as dear what? Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? I mean, we have, a, we have a daughter and her mother, right? Are you a follower of your mother? As, dear, as a dear child? Are you a follower of your mother as a dear child? 
Are you a father of your dad as a dear child? In our culture, in our day and time, heck no. <laughs> we, don't, we don't care about our parents. So this actually is confusing because our day and time children do not follow their parents. They just don't. So what is this really saying? It says to follow them? Where, oh, how's that go? I will follow you, follow you wherever you may go. All right, that's cute, but that's not what this is talking about. Be therefore followers of God is not what it says. So let's find out. There it is, the koine. Dun, da, da, da. Deneste uon mimitai teo theus os tekna agapeta. Agapeta. You're hearing little words pop in there. They go, oh, it's popcorn time. <laughs> All right, so let's break it down. Followers is the word mimitai. You ever heard of a mimic? All right, mimic me. Lucy, mimic me. <laughs> See, that's mimitai. She was mimicking me. All right. So, goodness they, uom mimitai. All right, it's mimitai, and it is to an imitator, one who imitates. The word deer is the word agapeta, which here in this usage is the way that's the form is a adjective. It's agape, but it's agapeta, which is an adjective. Like um, that woman's motherly. That doesn't mean she's a mother. She's motherly. That word mother, mother, the word li on the end of it makes the an adjective, right? So to be a, uh, or that person is my, is very brotherly to me, that the word brother becomes an adjective. So this is an adjective of what? This word. Well, what's that word? All right. That word is techna. I gave you a hint of what techna is. Techna is a pre-adolescent. See that? Isn't that cute? <laughs> little mini person, little rug rat. Well, no, he's far greater than a rug rat. He's past carpet commander. All right. So how do you imitate God? Now, now let, me, let me take it back here to this, okay? What is agape? What is agape? Having the same what? Same, same priorities. Anything else? Same thoughts. Same thoughts. What else? Same, same direction. Same value system. Everything the same. Well, how long does it take for a child to develop to be the same orientation, the same perspective, same value system, same focus as his parents? Yeah, and by the time they get to be 14, they're going to be following their father. They're going to tell their father, up yours, right? Standard Greek and Roman idea. All right, so here we go. How do you imitate God? Now, we, we covered that. It's to imitate. But we want to look at what is first. How do you mimic? Do you mimic first and then develop agapeta? So what do you got to know first? Number first thing you got to do, since this is an adjective, Since this is an adjective of technon, which is the child, which is the most important. First, you've got to know that you're a what? Son. Then you've, got to adapt, then you've got to adapt your what? Your priorities, your perspective, your value system. Then you can what? Imitate. People want to imitate without acknowledging they're a son or changing their thoughts, images, and priorities. It the answer is, it don't work. So how do you rephrase this? As an agabeta child, a child that adore, that is, mimic, is developing to be 
a mirror image of his dad. And you see the little boys. They're up there, dad shaving, and they want to shave. They got their dad's shoes on, right? And they're walking around. They're standing and talking like their dad and, you know, saying the things that the dad says. It's cute, right? But what is that? They're developing this agapeta as a son. So this is the adjective. That's the noun. So this is amplifying the noun. Okay, so as an agape the child, having God's what? Thoughts, images, priorities, and what? Purposes. Then, then, so you first got to know your son. Then you got to start changing your focus, your priorities, because if you don't, you're going to be a rebellious son. Yes or no? Many times I've wound up with my, my uh, gluteus maximus extremely hot. <laughs> So once you've got the knowledge of being, you gotta know that God is, then you gotta know that you're a son, then you gotta change your adot, your thoughts, images, priorities to align with God. Then, then, then you can what? Imitate him. Because if you don't have the same, how many have ever hired somebody to do something? Right? And you hire somebody and they don't have the same perception you do, they don't have the same value system you do, and when they do the job, they don't do it what? They don't do it right. They did totally opposite what you said. So they got to have, in order to imitate God correctly, you've got to have his thoughts, his images, his priorities. Is that making sense? Is that like, okay, good. So let's look at some examples. How do you imitate God? What characteristics of God do you imitate? Let's take the big one, okay? Okay, I got to create a frog. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about creating a frog. The first thing you got to do is Jeremiah 19.5. Watch this. They have also, okay, they have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spoke, neither came into my what? Mine. There is where God's will, his word, resides. It either resides when he commanded it, spake it, or it's still in his what? Mind. You ever got that? Why did people do this? Because they thought it was right. They go, this is, this God will be pleased with. He's like, what are you doing? And they were taking their children and sacrificing their children. And they're like, what are you doing? And it's like, what? I didn't, I didn't command that. I didn't speak it. And I didn't even come into my mind. What are you doing? And today, people are doing all kinds of things because this is what will please God. When I was in the Philippines, I watched people actually crucify people from every single village. Not There were some that weren't. They were Muslim. But they would take them, and they would lay them on it, and they would actually nail them to the cross, and they would, each village would do that, thinking that would please God. Do you see a problem with that? Imagine if your child did that when you got home. What happened to the dog? Well, I thought it would please you, so I crucified him. Yeah, you know, come on. <laughs> that makes absolutely what? No sense. I don't sacrifice, sacrifice. Come home and your cat has been sacrificed by your child. I've been a bad, bad child, so I sacrificed our cat. What? You understand how silly this is? So they built hot. So this is where God's word God has. Before God spoke it, he had it where? In his mind. Before God commanded it, it was in his what? Mind. And we are designed, God created us in his what? Image. So just as God is in the whole universe, we are in our bodies. So those are the most important. The most important is into my mind. Luke 6.45. Watch this really, really um, focus, okay? Jesus is teaching this. His subject matter is still the same. Notice it says, a good what? A good man out of the good treasures of his heart will bring forth that which is what? Good. An evil man. Now, what's evil? One going by his own private what? Interpretation. Interpretation. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is what? Evil. For reason... When I say four, what do you say? Reason. 
of the abundance of the heart, his mouth, what? Speaks. You want to know what's in a person's heart? Listen to their what? Words. What comes out of their what? You don't say anything. Just get them to speak. Get them to speak a lot. Ask them questions. And as they speak, you'll be able to understand their what? Their heart. Does that make sense? So the word says, out of the abundance, whatever is in there, the majority of whatever is in there is going to come out. How many here have had a, a friend who's a mechanic? All right? You spend time with them, all they do is talk about what? Engines and cars, right? You ever seen a woman who's, um, a, who's, who's uh, a good cook? Why is she a good cook? Because she spends all her time what? Cooking. And she'll tell you about all the things she's cooked and all the things she's made, right? Because that's what is the abundance, the majority of her what? Thinking. What she perceives, what she thinks about, what she meditates on. So let's review that again. I'm going to mark the goods with the green, okay? A good man out of the what? Good treasures. What's a treasure? Matthew tells us it's thoughts. Good man are the good treasures. So the majority, that's the abundance, the majority of what one thinks. A good man are the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is what? Good. Isn't that difficult? No, it's not. Before someone can sell you something, they've got to change your what? Thinking. They sit there and say, now, if you were to buy this, where would you put it in your office? You haven't bought it yet. Where would you put it? Now you got to picture it in your what? The battle's already won. It's already won. An evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, bing, bing, evil is ungodly, that which is opposed to God. Bringeth forth that which is what? Evil. No, it's nothing benefiting God or anything of God. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth what? Speaketh. Isn't that fascinating? Now, how important is this? Oh my gosh, how important is it? Very, very important. No, important. <laughs> important is a different thing. All right. Acts. 420, for we cannot but what? Speak. Subject matter is the same. Speaking the things which we have what? Seen and what? So what does seen and heard, what happens when we see and hear things? We what? Remember it. It goes into our mind. Do you understand? It goes into our what? Mind. Okay, repeat after me. All right, you see something. You hear something. It goes into your what? Mind. mind. Do you mind? Yes. Some of those things you, uh, people say, oh, Frank, you've got to go see this movie. And the answer is, I am not interested. I don't need that garbage. I, got, I don't got a lot of room up there. I got to be really selective. <laughs> That's not funny. Okay. <laughs> So I'm very selective what I put between my ears, right? So things I don't want to hear, things I don't want to see, you know, unless it's a professional advantage. So what you see and what you hear is going to go into your what? And you've got to mind. You've got to really care about. I don't want that in my brain. Oh, the man just dropped a four-story building. Oh, come and see. What? I don't want to see that. I don't need that in my brain for the rest of my life. You've got to prejudge if you want to see it or not, if you want to have it in your brain or not. Is that making sense? Does anybody know what this is? Yeah, it's a picture, yeah, very good. I give that man an A. All right. All right, now what's this? Now, why, why can't you call this a safe? Can you call that a safe? Which is safer? Now, this is really important because they're both containers. They're both made of metal. But is there a difference? 
Yes. Everybody go, yes. Okay, there's a big difference. Now picture this as your mind. Which one is it? Really? If, the, if it's the safe, you're always the same no matter what. Nothing changes you. So these are the two things, right? This is like, this is, all right, ready for the uh, simile? All right, simile time, okay? This is similar to your what? Yeah. And this is similar to a what? No, brain. They're both brains, right? Because what goes into your brain, as you keep hearing it, eventually makes that six-inch drop from here to there. The more you hear it, over and over again, the more it drops into here. The brain is the first contact. And if you let it in there, then it drops all the way down. You've got to control. All right, so here's the question. Ready for the question? You're, you're neat. I like you. How do you know what type and quality of material is coming out of each container? If I said I'm going to get something out of here for you, what would you say? No, thank you. If I said I'm going to take something out of here for you, you go, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> right? Why? Because you, are, you have this idea that there is a better type and quality of material coming out of here than out of there. Why do you have that idea? You ever wonder, don't you ever curious about yourself? How, why do you think this, and, you know, why does this work? Why does this happen? Okay, I'll rephrase the question. What controls what comes out of each container? What controls what comes out of here? What goes in? All right. What controls what comes out of here? What goes in? Does that make sense? Do the things that go in here go in here? Uh, no. Do the things that go in here go in here? Uh, no. Okay. This, this is the difference. What controls what comes out of each container? And the answer is what goes in, what? In. Because what goes in here, you don't want to come out. What goes in here, it's be safe so you can retrieve it. That which is valuable goes here. Acts 4.20. For we cannot but speak the things which we have what? Seen and what? Here. Some of the things you see in here go in here. Some of the things you see in here go where? In here. Hopefully what I'm teaching you, what you're seeing in here, it goes in here here and not you need to have this more than this most people's trash can is bigger than their safe and some people don't even have a safe they just have a trash can and it's all mixed up you understand am I, am I telling the truth yes they don't even have this they got this and it's all their valuables and their junk are all mixed up together Okay, how do you imitate God? Jeremiah 4.28. For this shall the earth mourn. And the heavens above be black. Because I have spoken it. I have purposed it. And will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. Whoa. What God says is, what God says will be, will be, and ain't nothing going to change it. You can cry, you can mourn. Oh, God, do something. He's not doing anything. It's already been set. It's like a train. That track is set. That train is moving. And you can sit there and pray for that train to go another way. It's on that track and it's going that way. Everything God said is going to happen. If nobody believes it, it's going to happen. So you have two choices. You can stand in front of the train, 
miss the train or you can ride the train. And I want to ride the train, right? So how would you describe that type of mentality that God has? I have spoken it. I have purposed it. I will not what? Repent. I will not turn back from it. Wow. That's the characteristic of who? God. God's mind is like a, is like a steel safe. It ain't moving. You could say that God has what? Integrity. What God said is, is. What God says will be, will be. Nothing can stop it. Nothing will change it. All the prayers in the world aren't going to do it. People can scream and mourn. Then people, oh, God, do something. God's not doing anything. God's already given his what? Word. He's already told us. Yes or no? This is God's top, his top characteristic. This is the hardest thing in this society to build. We don't appreciate integrity. Our actors, they all have integrity. No, they don't. They deceive by their very lifestyle. Well, our, our politicians, no, there's no integrity with our politicians. Nobody, the hardest thing to do is to compare yourself with someone else. Don't do that. If you're going to compare yourself to anybody, compare yourself to Christ. All right, there he is, and here's where I am. I'm working that. Am I better off than I was last year? You need to look at yourself and say, where have I been yesterday? Did I, was I, did I do a better job? Did I do a better job than last week? Am I on progress? Am I, when you... When you, you've got to have a map. So if you're going to go to where you're going to be a man or woman of God, and you're going to walk with the power and authority of God, and you're going to have a rich and beautiful life, you've got to stand, you've got to know where you're going. If you don't have a map, you're toast. And if you get on every single off-ramp, you're never going to make it. Is this making sense? So, Characteristics of God. 1 John 1 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is what? No darkness at all. All right? How many here have light of God's word in you? Right? How many have no darkness? How many of you have integrity that everything you say you will do and you're not backing out of it? Oops, 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 right? I don't feel like it this morning. You still what? Threw it anyway. That's called what? Integrity. Because you said you're going to do it. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should what? God don't lie. What does that tell us about us? I remember when I used to go fishing, I used to catch a fish this big. Well, you see the picture and the fish is only this big. What happened? Well, it constantly, as I kept telling the story, it got bigger and what? Oops. Why were you late today? Well, I, um, and out comes the lies. Be careful. Hold your what? Integrity. You don't have to say anything. I'm late. Why are you late? I'm late. Couldn't help it. I could have prepared better. So I got to say, you take what? Responsibility. It's not the traffic's fault. It's not the, it's the car's fault. It's the ass, ass's fault. Ass fault. It's the, <laughs> no, 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 no. Whose fault is it? Why are you late? I didn't, I didn't think it through before. I didn't prepare. I'm late. Take responsibility. It's not no one's fault but yours. And what happens? It makes you what? Grow in what? Integrity. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should what? What does that mean? 
Well, the sons, I know that was what my father promised, but I'm not going to do that. The parents don't, the children don't follow the parents. The word parent here means that which is the person who mentored him. That's why it says my father, even though it's not his father. Someone who gives him, like Timothy was Paul's son. Not really, but Paul mentored him. Hath he said, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it? Now, here it is. I'm going to point to it, and you're going to say it, right? Good. What does good mean? Good. Bringing to pass God's word. Hath he spoken, shall he not make it what? Good. Exactly the way he called it. Now, if you're going to be that person who's going to agape and change your thinking and align your priorities with God, that makes you pretty special in God's eyes. Do you understand? All of a sudden, you appear before God. He sees you. Of all the, how many people on earth? Over 7 billion people. God sees you. That's pretty cool. Remember, Adam and Eve blew it, and then God says, where are you? Well, on earth, when he looks down the earth, who does he see? Hopefully, this is why I'm working so hard. <laughs> I, I can see you. Yay. <laughs> the object here is to be seen by God. He doesn't go, where are you? Oh, I see you. I want you. The more you get this right, when you have God's heart, his thoughts, his priorities, the more you are visible. All right, stop and think about all the people you know. How many of those have your thoughts, your images, your priorities? If you think about it, those are the people that are right front and center in your face. Yes or no? Those who don't have your priorities, your cares, your concerns, your focus, they are not part of your thinking. So if you want to be in the center of God's thoughts, start aligning your thoughts and images with God, seeing from God's perspective, seeing things the way God does, valuing what God values, and lo and behold, boom, you're in front of God. And boy, oh boy, you are in a protective bubble which is, I believe, good idea, okay? <laughs> it's a very good idea. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a very good idea. Can a woman forget her sucking child? My sucking child? No, it means nursing <laughs> child. It means nursing. It's nursing child. I know today, sucking sounds bad, but... Can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yea, they may forget. There are women that have actually taken newborn babes and put them in dumpsters in New York and in Los Angeles. Discard them to the trash. Newborn babes, come out of the hospital and throw them in the trash. Yea, they may forget. Yet will I not, what? Forget thee. Now, that's, that's God's commitment. That's God's word. And he had it right. Written what? Down. He's stuck. He has to do it. He's been, have you ever signed a contract? It's written down. You will do this. God has, well, where's our contract with him? There isn't one. That's his contract for us. So every day, you know what I've done? Every day I go over my contract with God. I have one. I what? Write down. I review my contract every week. God keeps his. I need to keep what? Mine. But what happens if I forget my contract? What happens if I forget my commitment? Hosea 4, 6. Ready for this? I will be able to be, if I forget my contract, you, you can know my destiny. Why? Because, Hosea 4, 6. My people, these are people that start off with a commitment to God, are what? Is destroyed a good thing? No, it's not. Destroyed is not a good thing. Not healthy, right? It's not healthy. 
Not a happy thing. My people are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge. Well, I have an encyclopedia, and I'm always on multimedia all the time. That's not what we're talking about. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. What kind of knowledge? I will reject thee. That thou shalt be no, and that word priest means prophet. It's, it's, it's not Cohen, because it, God wants all his people to be what? Prophets, and that's in numbers. He doesn't want them to be priests. Seeing thou hast what? Forgotten, here we go, forgotten the law of thy what? His commitment, his commitment. What about our side? I will also forget thy what? Will God forget the children or the children won't even know God? If the parents don't know God, then how will the children know him? That's a heterosis. You reject knowledge. Thou hast forgotten. You know the consequences. All right. Did God write the scriptures? Yes or no? I said no. I'm going to try it again. Okay. Did God write the scriptures? No. That's right. God's the author. All right, ready one more time. Did God write the scriptures? No. Thank you. All right. God did not write the scriptures. God's the author, but he's not the writer. Right? We have today, we have books, right? All the books. Those are the people that wrote it, but they're not the publisher. Right? The one who actually puts it on the pages. Right? So, does God write, did God write the scriptures? No. That was, okay, one more time. Did God write the scriptures? No. no. All right, good. All right? No. Why? God doesn't what? Forget. God knows what he what? Said. God doesn't need anything to what? Remember. He doesn't. Does man forget? Does man remember? Or know what God said? No. Does man forget the day of the week it is? How about the year? Does man forget the names of his children? Does he ever call them by the wrong name? Do they ever forget the name of the family members? This is really bad. Does man forget where he put his or her car keys? No one stole it. They put it. You can't remember where you put your car keys or your wallet. I know it's here somewhere. You can't remember. And it was not even a couple of hours before. You walk out of the room and go, what am I in this room for? Whoa. Does man forget where he put his or her car keys? Oh, yeah. How about his wallet or her wallet? Yeah. How about you ever miss him lose a credit card? How could you lose a credit card? Don't you know how valuable that is? Does man remember what he said a year ago? How about last month? How about last week? Okay, let's take it just two days ago. You can give, there's 12 hours there. Tell me what you did during that 12 hours. All right, how many Christmases have you received presents? How many presents did you receive every Christmas? So how many Christmas, how many presents have you totally received? Now write down what they are. You only remember one or two. You forgot all the others. This is called sad, right? 
does man need something to help him remember? And the answer is? Yes. yes. Dumb shit. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm talking about myself too. God gave his word and he had man what? Write it down. Did, my, did man write the scriptures? Hell yeah. <laughs> if he didn't, he wouldn't what? Remember it. You've got to, if you want something to remember, you write it what? Down. How many of you ever made a shopping list? Forgot the shopping list, still went shopping, and still rebought all the things you were going to buy. Because you did what? You wrote it down. Somehow when you use your mind, your thoughts, your physical body to write, by doing that, you impress it even more into your mind, into your memory. So did God author the scriptures? Yes. Did he write them? No. Man wrote them. Ask Moses. By the way, God gives what? Doctrine, reproof, and what? Even when he writes his word. These are the size of the tablets that Moses brought down. This is it. Five lines here, five lines here. It took him 40 days to do this. I didn't tell you to write that. No, I no, that don't write that. No, don't write that. Write this instead. No, I didn't say that. Write th 40 days to write 10 lines. <laughs> they weren't these big gravestones that you see in the movies. Is this making sense? Pardon? No, no, those are gravestones. They were carved from rock. <laughs> You'd have to have some big muscles, right? All right. Now, let's continue. Everything man writes, when he just writes something, how many wrote a letter and notice it's all one-sided? You ever know what I'm saying? You read someone else's letter about the same subject. It's not the same as how you perceived it. All right, let me take you to, every man writes is biased. That's why God needs to give doctrine, reproof, and correction. He gives his word and says, no, I didn't say it that way. This, I, no, I, no, don't do that, right? Do it this way. So even in giving God's word, God has to give reproof and what? Correction. So written from his point of view and priorities, the very first world war. Now, in antiquity, the greatest war fought ever was the Battle of Kadesh. These are the two greatest empires clashed head on. And we didn't even know about it until about 150 years ago. We had no idea what even happened. It's the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC. Two great empires collided. The, the battle was the, the Pharaoh, we didn't even begin the translation um, until 1820. So you can see we just discovered this. We, they're written everywhere, but we can't read what's written. And we just now, just recently, been able to go, oh, now I understand what it's saying. Pharaoh Ramses II of Egypt and King Muatali II of the Hittite Empire. 20,000 Egyptian soldiers against 40,000 plus Hittite soldiers. That is a massive battle. That doesn't sound like much. Well, in that day and time, the whole earth only had one billion people on it. Not seven billion as we have today. So we're talking a lot. That's, that's a major clash of, of military. The Egyptian hieroglyphics, which is what you see in the background here, and the Hittites both declared victory. Now, how can that be? How come both sides have won the war? The Egyptians say they won the war. The Hittites said they won. So who won? So when you go to Egypt, you see Ramses II all over Egypt, walls and walls depicting his victory over the, over the Hittites. 
and you see them, they're so tiny, and he's so big, and he just obliterated them. Does the word propaganda make any sense to you? All right. <laughs> now, when you look at this, number one, there was twice as many Hittites. They never engaged their army. They only used their chariots. The chariots had iron wheels, iron coating wheels over the wheels. They also had iron weapons. Well, the pharaoh, the Egyptians, had bronze. So all you got to do is bring out your iron, and then they bring out their sword, and you go whack, and the thing gets broken in half. So is this an advantage? Yep. Uh, yep. The arrows went further because they were heavier, and they would go too, and they would pierce through things. So you understand, this is like pretty intense battle. And, it, and it, the whole battle got up to it. There was a 10-year battle, and it ended with the Battle of Kadesh. Both sides said they, they won. All right, if they won, if the Egyptians won, why did they give up Kadesh to the Hittites? You see the problem here. How was it that the city that they were fighting over remained on the Hittite side? But according to the Egyptians, they won the battle. And it's detailed what happened and how brilliant Pharaoh was. If you read the account, he wasn't so smart. All right. The battle had been wiped from memory of mankind. It would have been lost forever if it were not for the hieroglyphic writings which returned the battle to the memory of what? Humanity. It was written in the stones in both empires. And for 4,000 years was not available, was gone. And then all of a sudden, someone decided to read them. Once we learned to read it, it was like, ah. If you write down everything you've done, if you were to write it down, and you think you remember, then go back and look, and oops. <laughs> it's not what I remember. Does that make sense? So you've got, we've got to take what? charge of our life, right? Who are you accountable to? God. So who's in charge of your life? God set you free, so who's now in charge of your life? If you hired somebody for 10 hours, at the end of the day, what would you say to him? Because you're going to pay him. You're going to give him $150 for his time, right? So what's, what, will the, what will the question be you ask him? What did you do for eight hours? <laughs> what did you do? Guy says, I, I was playing video games. Now what do you say? God's called you to be his what? Azir. So how well did you do last week? Tuesday, what did you do? How about Wednesday? Were you a success? What endeavor did you have? How did you improve? What principles were you practicing? You, you see the problem? We just think we're just going to coast through life. You're just coast. We, we can't coast. You've got to take measured steps to make your life what? Better. You've got to take control. Imagine running a business where you just let all your employees do whatever they want to. No. You want to know, what did you do? To take charge of your life and record the account of the growth and development of a... So you've got to be in charge of your own what? Development. You've got to be in charge of your own growth. Well, I'm going to go back to the swing set and eat candy. No, those days are what? Gone. Memitai to theo os techna agapeta. You are to what? Record the account of the growth and development of a one who is imitating God as a child, as a child of agape. Or agape child. Got it? In other words, a child. You are take charge of your life, record the account of the growth and development. 
You're in charge of your own development. You choose. And if you can take care of yourself, then God will give you what? Another. And that's how leadership grows. Take charge. Take charge of your life and record the account of growth and development of a child growing and developing in God's thoughts and images, priorities, and purposes, and imitating his father, God. Well, who is that person that you're taking charge of, that you're overseeing? You. And when you take charge of you and you do a great job, well, God give you. If you're doing a terrible job, God's not going to give you any more. How would you like to be extraordinary leadership at work? Wouldn't that be good? If everybody really saw you as someone they can trust, someone they can go to, someone teach me how. It's awesome to be you. Who are you? A son of God, agape God. That's why I say it's awesome to be you. Who's the contrary? Okay. <laughs> now, what I want to do is explain what we're supposed to do according to God's word. All right. This is the problem. All we have is that. This is our mind. We put valuables in there, and we put junk in there. And you have, and we mix it together, and we're totally corn-fused, right? I've made that. That's a joke. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. I appreciate that. Okay, so understand that this is what we've been brought up with. This is what we have. And when we want to find something valuable, we have to go through all of this to find it. Amongst the junk and the garbage and everything else. To find it. So what you need to do is to get a journal. Right? Does anyone know what a journal is? Right? It's just a it's a it's a book with blank pages, right? Sounds like easy to read. Yeah, really easy to read. It's blank. <laughs> <laughs> but the other person says, I went through three books though with this last week. Really? Yeah. And, and my, now I got to go out and buy new crayons. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so this is what we have that this culture has given us. We've got everything in there from, you know, um, dumb, stupid things that we remember and we can never forget stupid music and songs. I'm too sexy for my clothes, music, you know, that kind of stuff. That's all in there. And we've got, we can't, we can't get it out. And you, you really, it's there like forever. So what you got to do is not think of it anymore. And what happens, it fades away. Just like your desire to play on the swing set. It, it doesn't come to mind, so you don't do it anymore. You don't want to, right? Okay. So we have to take this and we have to list, if we want to separate the good from the bad, we have to go through and do a full inventory of this. And then once we got the inventory, then we separate it what? And throw the trash away. Now, where is your journal? You need to empty this onto the journal. Now, what you're going to see also, you're going to find are things that you didn't fully complete. Things that you almost got done, but didn't finish. And you got to pull that out. And it's like, like you got several jigsaw puzzles you never completed. And you got to pull them out and go, oh, shoot, I only had two more pieces to go. And you get that set aside. And well, do I want to continue this? You have to do an, ana you have to do an analysis of what you got, what you attempted, what you dreamt about, what you esteem valuable, and, and, and separate out from the junk. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to empty 
this onto, I mean, you get one of those like 100 pages and just write it all in there, <laughs> right? You'll see that it actually forms out, but at least you'll get it out. And it's not going to take you one hour. I assure you, it's going to be like, oh, I just thought of something I always wanted to do. Oh, I just thought of something else I had in my mind. And you just write it down. And just write it down. And then you value it. Should I, should I even think about this anymore? So you separate it between, because right now we got this mixed with valuables and good stuff. Yes or no? When you're, right, when you're trying to do something, well, I want to do this, but I also want to do this, and I also want to do that. And when I do this, I, oh, I remember when I forget that, let that stuff go, cut all the wires that are attached to it, bring it out, simulate, and judge it on its value now. What can you do with it? How can you accomplish? What, how can that make you a better person, more skilled, more knowledgeable, more wiser, more capable? That's what you're after. You want to be your best for who? God. Well, how do you be your best? I mean, you look at David. What was he? He was a sheep herder. Shepherd. Shepherd. Right. How do you wind up being king? He gained in skills and ability. Did he not? Did all he ever know how to use as a sling? No. He learned how to ride a horse. He learned how to use a sword. He learned how to command battles. He learned administrative skills. He learned, you know, accounting. He learned all that stuff and became an outstanding king. Yes or no? So what you do with your life is what God gave you is life and gave you the ability to go beyond your wildest dreams. But it's up to you to make that decision and take charge of your life. So you've got to get that journal. You whip out that journal and everything that comes to mind of everything you wanted to do, everything you want, you, you desired, every dream you've had, write it down. Did I have dreams? Yeah, I had dreams of I wanted to go sky, scuba diving. I did it. I wanted to go skydiving. I didn't do it. I jumped out and I was jumped out, thrown out of an F-14 and I went, you know, on a parachute down. But that's not the same thing as, you know, skydiving or parasailing. So I'm not going to do that, right? I had a job, I thought about, I'm going to go and, and, and joust like a real knight, you know, and put on the armor and, and knock another guy off with a big stick, right? I didn't do that. Came close, so do I still have it in my memory? Yes, but I have to make a judgment. Is it still valuable to think about? Should I waste any more effort and thoughts on this? If not, then let it what? Go. But when we go through the trash, we go, oh, I remember this and I remember that. Oh, yeah, and this, this is when this happened. Watch out. <laughs> You'll spend all day, three days, a whole week inside the trash can. <laughs> you think I'm joking? You haven't done this yet. You'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everything that comes to mind, every desire you've had, every great, write it down. Get it out. Empty the, just knock the thing over and put it all on paper. No one's going to read it. You're going to read it, but you're accountable to who? God. So don't worry about anything else ex except, except what's in there. <laughs> you got to find out what's in there first, right? Dig deep, go all the way down to the bottom, pull it out. All your disappointments, things that upset you, things that you desired, just get it all out and then look at it. Is this really that important? Why do I even hold on to it? Does that make sense? How is this to even have this in my mind? Is this important? Does it glorify? Is it helping me become my best? Get rid of it. Is that making sense? I got rid of pretty close to two tons of books. I'm a book nut, right? Well, it's like a bookworm, except I don't eat them. I read them. But anyway, <laughs> that was another dumb joke. Anyway, so I just, they, there was nothing of godliness in it, so I just got rid of them. If it has of things of God, I want it. But if it don't, go by. But anyway, this is what we got. This is what we have. This is what we, how many of you ever try to remember something? Why can't you remember it? You got too much other what? Trash, Trash in there. Garbage, which is French for Trash. <laughs> 
So how do you get, what do you do? You need to get it out of there. So you don't use this. You have this. Take the valuables out of here. And yeah, you're going to have to clean them up. OK, this, this needs to be, no, I can't predict it. Well, I used to want to do this to please this girl. So that's like pff, stupid. So why do I still do this? So well, I don't want that either. So you get rid of it. You have no idea what's in your brain until you write it out. And that which is valuable, where do you put it? Back in the trash can? No, you put it over here. And you dump this. Is that making sense? Now, there's a way to categorize it and stuff. But right now, all you got to do is just write out everything, dream, desire, things that you want to do, things you want to accomplish. You write it down. You'll just, don't worry about what it is. Just write it all down. Empty the trash can. Right? Get the valuables out of there. Then we'll start working on this. No, this, I have, a, yeah, I have a junk journal, right? It's called my grass catcher. I, I throw everything in there, right? Comes to mind, I write it down. Comes to mind, I write it down. But this is my journal, right? I have a journal that goes in here. And I have, if you want to call a journal a safe, I got four safes. Each one for different parts of what my job is. Isn't that weird? But for right now, you just need to start off with what? One. So you don't waste your time. You don't get off on every single off ramp when you're traveling, right? You make sure you drive your all your car. You're fully equipped to handle the job. Is that great? Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer a zero training again. And for those who are, uh, this is going to go on ACF side. So no one's going to see this except those who are trying, who are tithing, eventually sharing. And I'm going to teach. What to do once you've got this all written out, now what do you do with it? I'm going to teach people how to do, to excel, to accelerate. Not be going 25 miles an hour, <laughs> but to going 100 miles an hour to get to your destination. Because well, I like going 25 miles an hour. Well, you're not going to go anywhere. I'm going to maximize your acceleration. I'm going to maximize your accomplishments. I'm going to maximize your abilities. Does this sound interesting to you? That's going to be on ACF side. We're going to have a second group called what? Azir training. How to be another Daniel. How to be another Joseph. And that's the coolness of it. Right? But for right now, empty the trash. <laughs> get the valuables out of there and get rid of the trash. Get yourself a journal for well, at least 100 pages and go to town. And then go through it and pull out that which is valuable and cross out things that are not. Then, and once you transfer it to a new journal, then you take that one and you throw it away. Or burn it. I have the, 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 ringed, the ringed ones, you know, the ringed cheapo. That's where I dump the trash in. Then I have a leather one that I put my gold in there. My valuables. Yeah, just get one of those, throw everything in there, and then extract it to the safe. And then just get rid of the ring binder. Because when you destroy it, when you get rid of it, it's like all of a sudden you feel this freedom. You just feel totally free and light. I know it's hard to explain, but once you've actually gone through your whole heart, soul, and mind, listed everything, then you're like, wow. And you, you dump this and you're keeping this. It's like all of a sudden you feel so much lighter. It's unbelievable. For like, for like two or three weeks, you're like, you feel like you've got a purpose. You've got a direction. You're in charge. You're in control. Now, any of the things that you didn't write down are going to sneak back in and say, aha, oh, I didn't remember. I got you. And you have this page that's basically a grass catcher. Like when you mow the lawn, the stuff falls out, right? You catch the grass. You catch that and you go, I got you. And you write it down. Then you judge it later on. So I continue with this or shall I dismiss it? If you dismiss it, cross it out, write it on a piece of paper and burn it. And it's gone. And you're like, it's like all of a sudden you, you free up so much room. You're not mentally fatigued anymore thinking about everything. 
and you don't have memory problems anymore. <laughs> Where's my keys? I can't find my wallet. <laughs> Is that making sense? Okay, what do you got to do now? You got to empty your what? Trash. Trash. The, see, all of it. And pick out the valuables and get rid of the what? The trash. Father, I thank you for the greatness of your word, and I thank you for your people's lives, that they may at this time truly become set free, that nothing like a gourd in which they're caught in, that they have total freedom to accomplish and do all the great things that is their destiny, that they may walk in this day and time truly as your children, to glorify you, walking in the footsteps of your firstborn from the dead, our risen and return Lord Jesus, your anointed. Your God's what? Best. Best. That's right. God bless you.